Hey everyone, this is the Love of Cinema podcast. We like to talk movies. If you like to talk movies too, you come to the right place. I remember Mavlankar coming, Ashok Samarth coming from the first screening. I was outside uh, with another colleague of mine and as the people came out, <clears throat> it was Thursday night and as people came out of the theater, so neither Abhay was there nor Neha was there, of course, but Abhay was not there and Mavlankar was standing there, <laughs> you know, watching people come out and suddenly you know, two girls came and they hugged Mavlankar so tightly that Mavlankar was looking me one when they went, he said, Sir, mera haath ke dekho. and I held his hand and he was shivering. He was saying, means they held me so tightly. What have, what has happened in the film, you know? Hey guys, this is Himanshu, and this is the Love of Cinema podcast. 2007 was a great year for small films, films which went against the grain and left an indelible mark on the last decade. Films which tried to do something different in a very bold and confident way. Few months ago, I did an episode on Manorama Six Feet Under with director Naudeep Singh. If you haven't heard that episode, do check it out. On this episode, we'll be talking about another lovely small film from 2007. And that film is Ek Chalis Ki Last Local. And we'll be chatting about the film with the man who made it, Sanjay Kanduri. But first, if you're a first-time listener, do check out prior episodes of the podcast. You can find all episodes on Apple, Spotify, Stitcher, or wherever you listen to your pods. If you enjoy organic conversations, centered on Indian cinema and streaming shows. Love Cinema Podcast was created for people just like you. So do consider subscribing. For an independent podcast like this one, reviews make a big difference. So please do take a minute and review us in Apple Podcasts. Or if you listen to your podcast somewhere else, do spread the word on Twitter, Facebook, or Insta. It would be much appreciated. Back to today's episode. Ek Chalis Ki Last Local is a crime comedy that's packed with quirk. I got a chance to ask Sanjay everything about the movie, which I always wanted to ask. We talked about how the film was conceived, Kundan Shah's hand in encouraging Sanjay to write, pulling off the wonderfully improbable scenes from the film, delivered with a rare confidence from a director making his debut film, the lovely set built for Punappa's private gambling den, the cult characters of the film, like Malwankar, Naidu, Mangesh Bhai, and Patrick. Sanjay also shared crazy anecdotes around the screening of the film, shooting Naidu's Rajni act, and Deepak Shirke, who played Mangesh Bhai. Also, I learned that Sanjay and his team are currently working on spinning off a character from the film through an OTT series. How cool is that? I also asked him about references in the films from Pulp Fiction to Raj Kanwar's Dark, The Fire, and Ek Chalis Ki Last Local's influence on some of the newer films like Loot Case. Basically, we talked about all things Ek Chalis Ki Last Local. You guys ready? Here goes. Hey Sanjay, how are you? I'm fine, thank you Himanshu. Ek Chalis Ki Last Local is uh, one of my favorite films, so I'm really glad that today <laughs> I got a chance to uh, talk to you. Thank you, thank you. So Sanjay, let's uh, start uh, with uh, your career in films, uh, so to speak. So before you met films, I understand you assisted uh, Kundan Shah. Could you tell us what it was like working with him, who an absolute legend, and what you learned from Kundan? To be a filmmaker, actually, I learned from a couple of people and started from um, Sham Ramanna, who was um, heading a company called Crest Communication, which was one of the best VFX ad films company in Mumbai at that time. Crest Communication, uh, I joined there in production and I got to know about uh, back end, you know, behind the camera and uh, essence of production from there and uh, 
the, how to uh, visualize eventually uh, the VFX and ads that we see like fair and lovely six faces. So all that stuff was a great learning with Crest. Then post that I joined uh, Mr. Ghai, Subhash Ghai. That was as a second assistant director on a film called Tal. And it was also a great learning experience uh, in terms of uh, how to mount a film, you know. Uh, so that is another art until you don't see anybody mounting, you know, a film. You don't understand that, say, uh, uh, Akshay Khanna's house has, a big house has to be shown, you know. Uh, then what you can think, you know, at that time, and if you were asked to do a recce, you would go to Mud Island to see the biggest of the bungalow and the best of the bungalow. But you can't imagine that a full five-star hotel of Radisson will be made into a house. <laughs> and that house will look fine on camera, you know. So this is something that you can only absorb and see and experience when you see it happening in front of you. You know, and this is uh, what I learned from Mr. Ghai. Uh, post that I was very clear I wanted to uh, join Kundan Shah because I related with his uh, style of filmmaking uh, a lot. May it be Jane Bido Yaro or Kabi Ha Kabi Na. Uh, I really loved the simplicity by which he uh, expressed his story. So uh, it was not an easy task. Uh, I had to chase him for some time. And then eventually I got a break in a film called Dele Tumara. And from there I joined him as first AD and eventually I became you know, chief AD of him. And in this process there was great learning and the uh, humility uh, learn we because his name was so big but when I met him he was so grounded down to the guy, just another guy like in a shirt and a pant and a black bata shoes. You wow. Know? nowhere looked like you know what i had thought will be you know that pseudo guy <laughs> you know uh, from fti who would be like you know who's belting out such nice uh, films and content and so uh, so great learning experience in terms of how to see yourself you know and where to put your energies actually and uh, he probably is the guy who also pushed me into writing because I didn't know I could write unless uh, he gave me an opportunity that why why you guys just, you know, thinking that you are assistants, you used to tell us, me and other guys, you know, okay, give an attempt to a scene, just write one scene, you know, and then, uh, you know, we would set out on writing one scene or two scenes, you know, just like that, you know, so uh, that and that process, I realized that, okay, you know, I used to write alone myself, you know, uh, I had written a script or a two also, but I was not, uh, I didn't know that I could really write it. I was just writing it because there was so much of um, thoughts coming in the head, which I wanted to take out and they were, they seemed to be in line, you know, in form of a screenplay. And, <clears throat> but the real channelization happened through Kundansha and I remember I wrote a scene and that was the first uh, step ahead, you know, for Dele uh, Tumara, there was a scene which I had just written, sitting along with other assistants who were also writing the scene. And he really liked that scene and it was, it had some humor in it and uh, he started laughing. So I was a little sure. I said, yeah, he got it. He said, this is good, man. <laughs> you know, I said, really? So, and eventually that, that scene was also filmed, you know, <laughs> so I was, uh, I, I was really taken aback that, oh, means the writer has written something else, but I've written a scene and that scene has, is now filmed in the film. So uh, it was a great impetus, you know, that he gave me. I will always be grateful to him. Let's move on to Ek Chaliski Last Local now. And before I ask you how that story was conceived or uh, the germ of that story, Ek Chaliski Last Local came out in 2007. And uh, 2007 was a great year for small films. I think uh, Johnny Gaddar came out the same year. Uh, right. Manorama Six Feet Under came out the same year. Yeah. And uh, it's always hard to get a small film made. Um, mm. If you can talk a bit about how hard it was to get your film made, how you went about it, and then tell us, you know, how uh, you laid down the uh, germ of a, a Chalice Glass local. Look, at the time that we were battling to make our first films, the scenario was a lot different than what is today. You know, the the place was hobnobbed by mainstream 
directors like Vidur Noh Chopla, Karan Johar, etc. And to make a small film at that time was very, very tough, you know, because uh, the idea of cinema was more about singing, dancing, uh, you know. And in that scenario, to make something which is which does not have songs really, you know, or something which is almost a real time film, like Dhai Ghante Ki Kahani, Dhai Ghante Me, Akri Local Chuti, Peri Local Pakadi, Dhai Ghante Ka Time Me, Uske Andar Screenplay Fit Kan. So these were all <laughs> things which which were not happening, you know, at that time, and it was really tough to convince people, you know. So. But I believe that there is always a buyer, there's always a producer for your story. You just have to uh, be patient to find that or hardworking to find him. And uh, yeah, it took me three years and almost 90 producers to find mine, <laughs> quartered production. But eventually I did find them. So it was not easy. It was, uh, I had to be almost unemployed for three years and it was very hard because I couldn't join anywhere else and simultaneously pitch the film. So I, it used to be just round the bend. You know, everybody is liking it. Everybody is saying, great, great, great. But nobody is putting money. <laughs> you know, at the end of the day, you are running bankrupt. Nobody is, everybody is appreciating, but nobody is belting out money for the film. So, uh, yeah, it was, it, it was quite hard to get a break. And um, eventually... Uh, this film, how I landed with uh, the story goes back to Kundan Shah again because I was writing uh, bigger films because they were it used to come naturally to me, the scale. Uh, but he said that write a small one. You are a newcomer. Nobody will invest, you know, 25 crores, you know, on your thought, thought however good it is. You know, actors will not trust you with such a big mounting, even if it's a great story. Write a, a small film, write a film which will make a producer sleepless. Then he will tell you that you give me the story, take money and let me keep any other director. And that is your time when you will say that, no, if I'm the director, I'll give you the story for free. Even I'll work for free for you. That's so that how you is, work it. I see. <laughs> that's how then I started. I left everything else. And then I started to think what can be that story which I can make in a shoestring budget, you know. So thinking of that, you know, I eventually landed up uh, with Ek Chalis Ki Last Local, which was somewhere uh, inspired the initial portion from my experience of missing a last local. And then I stretched it into a two and a half hour screenplay. Interesting. Did you uh, work at a call center before? <laughs> not at a call center, but I did miss my local. Okay. And it was a rainy night and I was not allowed to sit on the platform also. <laughs> <laughs> yes, that, that, that scene is another favorite of mine and we'll talk about it. But uh, before yeah. that, uh, Sanjay, could you tell us a little bit about Quartet Films? What other films did they produce uh, during that time? Look, uh, Quartet Films was headed by two dynamic young uh, people, uh, Rajiv Shah and Guru Kher. And they were, they had made a film called Let's Enjoy an English Film before uh, with Siddhartha Anand Kumar, I think, and Ankur Tiwari. And they wanted to make a Hindi film and uh, were looking for, you know, a, a new age kind of a script. And uh, around this time, I, it was my 90th meet <laughs> that I happened to land up at their office with my script, which was at the back of my hand. And I just narrated uh, Guru the script, the script, and um, and he, he really liked it. He said, "Can we do one more narration?" Say day after. I said, "Okay." Then I, you know, I gave that. They said, "Okay, there's another one more. Can you do that?" I said, "Okay." The film was like at the back of my hand, and I had actually no expectations out of them, frankly, but I did reach what was the duty to do. And bang, after the fourth narration, you know, I was like, let's do the film. I said, really? <laughs> yeah, let's do it. <laughs> I said, okay. <laughs> so you have to be just persistent. And that's how I reached Quartet and I met Guru and Rajiv. And Ek Chaliski Last Local started from that small office in Bandra, you know. 
going back to that scene that you were just talking about, um, uh, just for listeners who have not uh, seen the film yet, in mm. uh, one of the early scenes in the film, uh, we see someone sleeping underneath uh, the bench on a railway platform. Yeah. And uh, when Abedawal comes and sits on the bench, uh, there's uh. a police constable who approaches him and starts right. to question his presence there. <laughs> and now here's the funny part. The person sleeping underneath the bench slides out and he's all grumpy at Abedawal for spoiling his sleep. But then suddenly he sees the constable standing nearby <laughs> and suddenly starts walking calmly and smugly. <laughs> I love that scene because it sort of sets the wacky, you know, borderline absurd tone mm -hmm. of the movie's comedy. And um, mm -hmm. uh, the, the, the movie is filled with these kind of scenes for those who are, haven't seen the film. But um, Sanjay, how did uh, Abhay Deol and Neha Dupia get attached to this uh, film? And they're just perfectly cast as a uh, English and Man Amadou. Well, yeah, means uh, it does seem so today you know initially we were looking at some other options uh, because abe was not in the scene at that time and it had already uh, we were like we had started to cast a year ago the film but we were not really uh, you know getting the kind of cast that was needed so <clears throat> around that time uh, abe's film uh, first film had come out uh, sochana tha i think and uh, yes, right and he was new kid on the block and the i had liked the film though it didn't do commercially that way but uh, i i really liked him in the film and it was around then that uh, i i met sandesh chandelia who did music for the film uh, and uh, i liked sandesh's music and i was telling him what is the kind of music i want and he said in this process that i know uh, means i've met abhay and if you want i can connect you guys you know so i said okay you know let's give it a shot kar do aap connect and uh, next i know is that you know uh, uh, he said i've spoken with abhay and he sent me the number i spoke with abhay he said let's listen to the script i narrated the script he liked the script and suddenly everything fell together <laughs> you know so you know one year of you know first thinking who to cast and going to people who we were thinking might be right for this role but they refusing on the money or you know remove this mm. particular scene x scene right. y scene you know so it was not happening and eventually i truly believe that you know a film comes to a person who it always belonged to you know देर सवेर सही लेकिन वो उसी के पास आती है जिसके लिए वो बनी हुई है एंड आई थिंक इट रीच अब है बिकॉज इट वॉज कट आउट फॉर हेम नेहा वॉज एक्चुअली वन ऑफ माई फर्स्ट चॉइसिस फॉर द फिल्म बिकॉज आई वॉन्टेड अ गर्ल हुज एक्चुअली प्रिटी एंड हुज बोल्ड ऑल्सो एंड एज अ गुड एक्ट्रेस एज वेल एंड नेहा हैड ऑल दोज क्वालिटीज इन हर शी वॉज मिस इंडिया एंड uh she had great screen presence uh, she had a alpha factor about her and her sensuality you know that the screen lights up when she's there so even in indian i knew because she's not been uh, uh, casted much in you know typical indian attire so this you know in the night film in an indian little glitzy avatar she would really look nice i was pretty sure about it and uh, so with neha i was pretty sure that if uh, you know she is one of the first people that you know we would go to uh, because we were dealing in a specific budget also you know and yeah i just narrated neha and she was anyways very welcoming to listen to script and i remember i she had called her me on her some set and my first narration and she was bang on means without a blink she said i'm doing the film the producer was like sitting just like a statue but taking a backflip <laughs> in inside his head and damn oh i got it now i now i'll negotiate money on my terms <laughs> so so i think that's what a good script does to people and it should also 
Uh, Sanjay, <laughs> let's chat about some of the popular uh, sequences and characters from the movie, and there are many. But I just, um, you know, chose some of my favorites, and I think these are probably, you know, widely um, appreciated and loved. And so I'll uh, tell you the scene or the character, and it would be great if you could share some interesting anecdotes around that scene from the time you were shooting or that particular character or the actor who played that um, character. Well, if I will remember now, I will share. <laughs> yes, to the best of your memory. It looks like a different... <laughs> Prior world. life, huh? Yeah, I can mm. imagine. Yes. So yeah. let's uh, start with <laughs> my uh, first uh, scene that I have here, which is the whole uh, fetishization of the beer at the bar bar. <laughs> <laughs> it's uh, the shots of beer bottles being opened, uh, intercut with mm. foaming beer. And uh, I, I completely, you know, that, that relates to me because after a hard day's work, uh, mm. if you see someone, you know, opening a bottle of beer or pouring a beer, you want to have that beer too. So, <laughs> uh, but what was, uh, what was the idea behind uh, this particular sequence? Firstly, uh, Barbar was just came across to me as an interesting name. It was, uh, you know, a bar was anyways there, but you feel like going again and again. So, bar bar jane ke bar dil karta hai, you know. So, I told my designer to keep the name of the bar bar as bar, bar bar only, you know. So, and um, I was shocked to see uh, recently in a mall I went. I don't know Phoenix Mall or where. <laughs> there is actually a bar which is called Bar Bar. <laughs> You know? Oh, wow. Okay. So, uh, for once, I thought I'll meet the uh, owner and maybe he'll turn out to be a Chalice fan. But then I <laughs> thought maybe he, he'll, he'll say he's come here for a free beer, I guess. <laughs> so, then I didn't go. But I was glad to see that name Bar Bar as, you know, what was there in our film. Anyway, so the uh, the whole thing of him uh, getting in the bar and wanting to have a beer you know uh, is something like like you felt similarly we all have felt in our you know times and uh, in our moments that when we are at a place and we also want to enjoy that place but the whole thing was how to show that you know that he wants to have a beer so i think the popping of the bottle sound is is the cue that i took on with that the bottles are opening and that is signifying his his thirst and lust for beer, you know, in the night. And it is becoming bigger and bigger and bigger. So there are more poppings which are happening and he's registering them, you know, till a, some someone pops it real close to his ear, you know. So so that is how, you know, the, we created a little poetry of, you know, Abhay Deol realizing that he really wants a, wants a beer. And this was a set. I, uh, it looks. Uh, it looks very real. It almost <laughs> no, looks no, like a is, real bar. No, no, it is. It is real. It is. We couldn't afford sets. <laughs> oh, okay. okay. So, so we. It, it. It was a bar in Bhender uh, by I some see. other name, of course. Sure. You know? Right. And uh, that is where actually I started my first shot of the film from. That was from indoor in that bar. Ek Chale started from there. You know. So it was, it was from this Bhender bar that. Uh, <laughs> that bar started. will always be special for you. <laughs> will always be special. One day I'll go there to drink. <laughs> <laughs> right. So another uh, thing that stands out from uh, a sequence that comes right after is uh, Punapa's private gambling den. And oh, that is some oh. gambling den. Uh, it's a gambling den that is packed <laughs> wall to wall with pictures of Indian diabetes. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> there's a long history of over-the-top, flashy, private, uh, teen patti dens in Hindi cinema. You know, quite a common stay among 70s and 80s action dramas. Mm -hmm. And this one in Ek Chalice, I thought, was such a great throwback mm -hmm. to those gambling dens. Share with us uh, your references for designing this gorgeous set. <laughs> well, the, there's a lot of uh, credit that I would firstly uh, give to Mr. Samir Chanda, who was the designer of the film, the famous art director. He was a very senior person to uh, put a hand on a film like this, uh, but he really liked the story. And so he said, yes, I'll do the the, art, the designing of the film. And the art was done by Pradeep and, you know, Amit. There were other guys who were doing the art, but the designing was by him. So 
uh, when I was sharing with him what is the characterization of this guy, Punappa, and you know, underworld kind of a guy who run, runs bars, you know, likes to gamble and be a boss. Uh, and that's the time when we were thinking. I had in my mind that he, because he's very God fearing that way, so he'll have uh, pictures of God in the room. But Samir Chanda took it to a different level. He said, let the whole from down to the top of <laughs> the, the room, I will put, you know, these. <laughs> let's uh, go know, full tilt with it. <laughs> let's go full on, you know. And and that's how, and I, I really like the idea. And that's how we had huge, uh, illuming. Uh, pictures of gods, you know, across the room, and we settled on dark green tone, you know, inside with little uh, uh, granite kind of a look to the whole place uh, to give it a little extra feel. So uh, Samir Chanda was the man behind, and uh, late Mr. Samir Chanda, and I'll always be thankful to him for uh, helping the whole look of the film look authentic and unique. So yes. that's how gambling then was designed. That's and, a beautiful, but, yeah, absolutely. And it beautiful. was one of the very toughest um, thing to execute. Also, that round table uh, card mm. game happening, you know, right. on. So uh, it was very uh, tough because there were multiple hundreds of shots of people throwing in their cards, and those shots have to be in sync with the game going on you know, of all six people playing together, everybody has to have, you know, their set of, uh, you know, chokka, panja, chakka, or, you know, uh, king, J, whatever. So, and the game has to move at a particular pace also. So you can't shoot a lot as well. You have to come, you have to wind up the whole thing in five minutes. So there were hundreds and hundreds of shots and I had only one night to shoot that. And it was like a, mayhem night, you know, trying to get the right shot, right reactions of everybody, you know. It was the toughest sequence I've ever done, truly, you know. But I'm glad that it fell together. Yes, yes. It's one of the highlights, in my opinion, of the movie. Yeah, and uh, cool. like I said, I, I really like that because, you know, it kind of reminds me of uh, some of the 80s um, films. Like, you know, there is a very uh, popular um, Seen in Jabaz, uh, Firoz Khan's mm -hmm. Jabaz, mm -hmm. where he goes to play uh, cards at um, mm -hmm. uh, Raza Murad's uh, gambling death. And okay. it kind of harks back to me, that. I, thought. I have not seen it, but uh, okay. I can. I can yeah, I don't know how much of a uh, Hindi film nerd you are, but uh, I, I really love those uh, scenes. No, Jabaz is a famous film, but uh, yes, truly yes. what happens is. Uh, whatever we do, we have absorbed it in our years of growing right, from right, one place right. or another. We cannot yeah. pinpoint as to, you know, if this was from, uh, you know, Firoz Khan's film, Zahabaz, or this was from uh, Karan Jaw's film, or this one was from Tarantino's film, or this one was from Guy Ritchie's, you know. Absolutely. So it's it's all, it, it, uh, it automatically starts coming to you when you are conceiving a scene. You know, and you know the whole knowledge that is absorbed in this process, they start to you know fall in the right places, you know, and sometimes you realize, oh, I so this is somewhere inspired from there, I think, you know, and then when if it is really looking hard on inspired, then you go and visit that again. That am I copying it? <laughs> it shouldn't happen. Then I'll have to remove it. <laughs> but if it looks like an inspiration and it it solves the purpose of the scene in a different manner, you know, beautifully, then we do keep it. Then you know, right, right. It's more like a hat tip. Uh, it's more like homage. Yeah. Uh, yeah, it's more like a homage, right? Sanjay, let's talk about uh, Kishore Kadam uh, as the one-eyed right-hand man of uh, Punappa. Uh, oh, what God. a great okay. actor he is. Uh, well, after a long time, anybody has asked about Kishore Kadam. <laughs> He's a great actor. Right? Uh, yeah. You know, I'm Maharashtrian, so I know a lot of his uh, Marathi films. And he's a great yeah. poet and writer yeah. as well. And he's just hilarious when he interrogates uh, Abhay Deol about who he's working for. <laughs> <laughs> and by the way, I always wanted to ask you this. Over here, is there a blooper when Abhay Deol says, you know, he works for Max Yorkie? And when we see the first scene, the name of the call center is Yorkie Max. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> so right. I was always Damn. wondering, is that a blooper or is that a person and the name of the company is different? Well, that's called 
damn you notice that oh god i never realized anybody would realize that <laughs> so i let it go i guess people have seen this movie again and again they they have noticed it. yeah and um, that that is uh, for sure that i have heard that i mean people have seen it multiple times probably it's their uh, smoking film or a drinking film <laughs> you know <laughs> whenever guys are everybody's pot, having fun smoking right? pot chal de are 40 chala de but uh, having said that kishor kadam look i i i the moment i harbansh best was casting and he's not a regular casting guy he generally does theater he's a theater director and he does uh, theater shows etc so he was uh, but he had a great experience and i wanted offbeat faces and he he knew a lot of offbeat faces because he was from theater so at that time all these the big ones had not come in to the play of who are ruling the mumbai scene right now and but the ones who were ruling at that time i didn't go to them as well i went to this chap you know because i thought he'll fetch me some very authentic faces and kishor kadam was uh, truly you know uh, one of those faces he i needed right hand of a uh, man of this don punappa and i wanted him to be uh, because he's the one who's going to do all the bad job you know so for punappa so he has to be the guy who doesn't smile much who doesn't talk much you know but i still need to give him some quirk so like he had a kanche ki aankh you know so his one eye is supposed to be of you know a marble which you know so uh, that's how kishor kadam was casted because uh, he had a very tough looking face and uh, and his sense of humor uh, that in the uh, while doing the casting you know in the audition was quite good so that's how i zeroed it on him now he's a big star I means we see him in a lot of serials etc a lot of places yes yes and i love that scene uh, where he asks abedol who his employer is and he says max yorki and <laughs> bujan thinks it's some foreign gang so <laughs> 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 and later on when we talk about influences of ek chalis ki last lokon on some of the newer films i'll tell you another scene from a new film that i thought mm-hmm. kind of you know reflects back on this scene but uh, moving mm-hmm. on for now um, let's talk about naidu Oh my God, Naidu's mm-hmm. Rajni act mm-hmm. is. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> you you just, won't know what Naidu did to me in his opening in his uh, opening please, shot. Please tell, please oh do tell. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so yeah, it was some experience. So like I was setting the mizanse for the uh, this scene where the cops have raided this den, and uh, you know suddenly Punappa who was about to kill uh, Nilesh. played by abhay you know has got to stop and not kill him because cops have entered the whole place you know in the main room and guns are out so now i was setting up who will be standing where and you know what will the way the camera position will be etc so that it is captured properly when uh, the dialogue came off uh, kanan our guy so rajni guy so i told him okay this 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 you know the camera will move from here to here you will walk from here to here and you will do like this what was there in the script also and he had done uh, in the what do we say after auditions yeah, the test the rehearsals okay now he suddenly comes to me and i said okay ready and he is like not ready not ready kind then he steps up to me and i am getting you know delayed because there's so much to can and he says sir nahi ho payega mujhse i said nahi ho payega matlab <laughs> <laughs> sir mere ko ina maza nahi aa raha hai mujhe jo hai ye ho nahi payega now main 2 minute ke liye <laughs> i almost staggered i said nahi hoga and i was thinking nahi hoga ye nahi kar payega to then at this moment where will i get another rajni <laughs> you know with so many rehearsals that i have done with him I said, तो मतलब क्या फिर आप क्या प्रॉब्लम क्या लग रहा है सर ये ना थोड़ा ओवर द बोर्ड और करना चाहता हूँ मैं इसको यू नो मैंने कहा रेली हाँ कहते सर ये ना उतना ओवर बोर्ड नहीं है सो वट रजनी यू आर सींग इन द फिल्म इज डबल ऑफ वट वॉज वट वॉज नॉट देयर यू नो सो एक्चुअली या सो द टेम्पो ऑफ रजनी वॉज अराउंड हाफ यू नो ऑफ हैमिंग 
and he he cranked it up to full you can so that full version is what you are seeing you know of rajni so he said ki sir main na isko aisa karna chahta hu main thoda aisa main kaha thoda zyada nahi lagega ye main thode se sirf quirk rakhna tha nahi sir ye ye aisa hoga kam mein hoga nahi mere se nahi to main kaha teri to hoga nahi to matlab ye to shoot hi ruk jayegi abhi ke liye main kaha let me bloody can the fucking thing right now acha nahi hoga to kal sochunga you know i said chaliye sir kariye ha <laughs> करो जैसे आपको करना है यू नो लेट मी सी हाउ इट गोज एंड ही डेड इट एंड आई आई रियली लाइक इट एंड फ्रॉम देयर ऑन आई सेट दैट मीटर टू दैट ओनली वो उसके नीचे जाता था तो मैं उसे वापस क्रैंक अप कर देता था <laughs> कि सर वापस <laughs> रजनी सर बन जाओ नो एंड इट वर्क्स लाइक अ चार्म इट एब्सोल्युटली वर्क्स लाइक अ चार्म इट डिड बट आई विल नेवर फॉरगेट दैट डायलॉग व्हेन ही केम अप टू मी सर मेरे से नहीं हो पाएगा ये यू नो विदाउट सेइंग एनीथिंग एल्स <laughs> okay. Very interesting. Mm. What an uh, interesting guy, guy and actor, and that uh, indeed, indeed. Act, it's, and it's like two minutes, but it's it's again one of the highlights. Yeah. No, and uh, means uh, he whenever his two minutes used to come on the screen, I realized that people really enjoyed him, you know. And uh, today I get really happy when I see him, you know, in such nice big lead roles, doing good stuff. You know? Yes, yes. But, it really feels nice yeah yes and by the way naidu dies with his boots on uh, in ways more than one he dies as a cop and also while holding the cigarette between his lips <laughs> <laughs> so that added extra touch that i like absolutely <laughs> and that's the way to go no <laughs> right yatha yatha dharti par bada paap sadhu se jano padi hua kasht to bole prabhu जा मालवण कर करके आप आप यो का नष्ट अशोक समर्थ इज मालवण कर दैट्स अ वेरी इंटरेस्टिंग एक्ट टू आई मीन इट्स इट्स लाइक अ क्रॉस बिटवीन ही इज ट्राइंग टू डू व्हाट कन्नन वाज डूइंग विद रजनी ही इज ट्राइंग टू डू लाइक अ बच्चन लाइक एट द सेम टाइम ही इज लाइक दिस यू नो स्टीरियोटिपिकल यू नो वेरी कुकी कट काइंड ऑफ अ मुंबई कॉप so uh, talk a little bit more about malvankar and ashok samarth <laughs> look malvankar ashok samarth was uh, already an awarded uh, marathi actor and he was looking for his space you know to to showcase himself uh, he was he's got a towering personality and uh, a good voice and that's the reason that i shortlisted him for uh, malvankar's role the encounter specialist uh, who actually turns the film uh so now the one thing was very clear that i wanted each and every character of mine to to have a voice of his own to have a quirk of his own have a ideology of his own because they have very short time on screen but that short time on screen should leave behind an impact on people that they have led a life before which has you know affected them and they are seeing that you know affected person you know who's uh, who's who's in front of them and mavlankar was uh, one of the key characters and so i had to work out a way and style of him because he was supposed to turn the film and carry the film and the protagonist etc he was the fulcrum of problems for nilesh madhu and everybody you know because he's now going to kill our protagonist and he's now taking from the jaws of ponappa now he's taking them away and they are in his jaws now because he's supposed to kill them now he's got a contract so so his presence and his menace should come you know clearly and that's what i discussed with my uh, with my dialogue writer also that i need him to to be little psycho who who's got a towering personality and way of talking he just doesn't speak normally and we came upon this you know shlok his ideology ये आदमी ना आत्मा मरती है ना खत्म होती बिकॉज ही हैज टू किल हिम इवेंचुअली सो ही डजंट हैव टू फील बैड अबाउट इट सो बॉटम लाइन इज दैट इट ही हैज टू स्पीक ऑफ श्लोक्स व्हिच आर गोइंग टू बी ऑफ हिज कन्वीनियंस यू नो काइंड ऑफ सो दैट्स हाउ वी एंडेड अप गिविंग हिम दैट दैट डायलॉग यू नो बिफोर ही वाज गोइंग फॉर अ किल और व्हाटएवर ही वांटेड टू डू and that's how you see mavlankar and of course we had to mount also his low angle shots etc so that he looks you know terrifying little dynamic doing that and it worked imposing yes it really worked yeah
I remember Mavlankar coming, Ashok Samarth coming from the first screening. I was outside uh, with another colleague of mine. And as the people came out, <clears throat> it was Thursday night. And as people came out of the theater, so neither Abhay was there nor Neha was there, of course. But Abhay was not there. And Mavlankar was standing there, <laughs> you know, watching people come out. And suddenly... You know, two girls came and they hugged Maulankar so tightly that Maulankar was looking me one when they went, he said, Sir, mera haath chuke dekho. and I held his hand and he was shivering. He was saying, means they held me so tightly. What have what has happened in the film? You know? And then we realized that how deeply people were affected by this cop's character. You know. That's what a you know a, a theater can do, a cinema can do to a person. <laughs> Yes, I think the beauty of uh, this movie is that all of these small characters, all of these uh, small, you know, maybe even cameos, like even Viradra Saxena and uh, I think it was Rasika Agashe, right? Uh, she, they were great too. Uh, yeah, Virendra Saxena was there and uh, the girl's name is something else, I think. I'll, I'll tell oh, okay. you. Okay. I thought it, yeah. was, it was Rasika Agashe, I, I might be wrong. No, not Rasika. They, her name is something else. I'll, I'll tell you in some time. Okay. So... <clears throat> Yeah, Virendra Saxena was always there in my mind, you know. He's one of those cast, like Neha was already there in the mind, that, okay, idly she should be casted. Similarly, Vijendra Saxena, because he was very uh, unpresuming, you know. You don't see Vijendra Saxena kind of a person as a gangster. You see him as a father, as an elder brother, you know, sorting out life, helping out people, not him as a gangster. So, <laughs> so I really felt that this guy is a gangster, you know, and with the kind of spunk that I had seen in him, you know, would look great in as a gangster. And surprisingly, he agreed also in a single blink. <laughs> like he was like thirsty forever. gangster <laughs> But I'm so glad that he agreed, yeah. Another character which uh, is widely loved and popular is Banayak Imported Large. Oh God! <laughs> Amit Mystery. <laughs> oh, <God. laughs> By the way, uh, I got to ask you this: Have you seen uh, Netflix uh, Tiger King? Tiger. Tiger what? King. King. It's a Netflix uh, original. King. Yeah, it's a documentary. No, no, no. Okay, do no, watch it, seen. and it's about a guy called Joe Exotic. I won't Achha. tell you, uh, I won't reveal any uh, more about it. But the first Achha. person when I saw Joe Exotic, the first person that came to my mind was Amit Mistry as Pat. Wow. <laughs> That's <laughs> nice. <laughs> I hope Amit listens it's, to there, this. There's, there's just some uncanny resemblance between the two. I even tweeted about this and I'll send you the tweet. Uh, I tweeted about <laughs> this a few months ago. <laughs> but but uh, Amit Mistry was uh, excellent too. Yes, he was indeed. And uh, initially, I was uh, trying to cast somebody else for this role. And uh, I, the one who was there in my mind, I had met also him. But somehow he was not in the frequency at that time, a brilliant actor. And I was... Are you sharing uh, who that was? <laughs> no, no, I don't want to share. Okay. Right okay. <laughs> so, uh, so I was in a kind of a lurch as to who's going to do this. It's such a pivotal role, you know, who's going to uh, portray this. And I started to just go back, you know, and think that who can be that guy who's the chirpy guy, you know, bumbling guy, overconfident guy, you know, carry all these things together. And then I remembered Kundan Shah's film, Kya Kehna. So in Kya Kehna, Amit Mistri was playing a role. In that, I don't know of brother or something of Preeti Zinta or something he was, you know. And I told uh, my casting director ki ek bar bulaye Amit Mistri ko. They said bula dunga main. Ajay, lag to rahe ki matlab he might fit, but are you sure he will really fit? He's little too good looking. I said we'll convert that too good looking into you know, like you know. Sadak Chap type good looking. So he said, okay. And that's what happened. Amit anyways was a great actor. You know, he had done work before. And so when he, he I gave him the lines, he did them well. Then I said, how to make you like down looking? Sadak Chap kaise hona I liked that idea. And then he started growing his hair, and that's how Amit Mistri became a mystery, you know. Uh, Patrick of our film.
of course uh, we have to talk about mangesh bhai and uh, Are again bhai. mangesh bhai i love the location and the scene too <laughs> and the scene just grabs you because there is alta fraja that's playing on <laughs> vinyl and there is some pop music video playing on TV <laughs> at the same time next to a huge aquarium <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's it's just a brilliant room and uh, Pak Shirke we all know is a great actor and he has just killed yes. it and I'm so glad that he did something killed some it. character like this you know with without yes, any hangups or anything like that so a uh, c- couple of uh, pivotal characters which were there in my mind while I was uh, writing the script and narrating the script Mangesh Chilke's role uh, the Deepak Shirke as Mangesh Chilke was always there in my mind. It was written around that phase. So while with Kundan Shah, there was a film of his in which uh, uh, Deepak Shirke was playing a role of a gangster. Okay. But it was a gangster who has broken his neck. So I observed that this six feet, you know, seven inches guy, uh, almost seven feet guy, you know, and yet he has a good sense of humor around him. You know, because uh, I had seen him on the set. And so while writing, automatically Deepak Shirke was there in my heart, you know, that ideally if I get Deepak Shirke, this role is set. And I was so glad the day he liked the role because it was a very tricky role. You know, it was not a regular guy. It was a, it was a, you know, a guy of a, a bisexual, you know, and if he would agree in that scenario to do that or no, you know, it was a really uh, tricky thing, but he said yes to it. And I knew that, okay, I'm now safe. <laughs> you know, I've got my lead negative cast in place, you know, and, and what he did. Oh my God. You know, I, I how much, how can I thank him? He's for absolutely him? brilliant. Yeah. yeah he's he completely brilliant. It off, yeah. I remember there was one problem. Once a costume designer came running to me just, you know, day before the shoot and they said that, sir, Mangesh Shilke ke, that is Deepak Shilke ke, shoes nahi mil rahe hain. Man ka nahi mil rahe hain, matlab, kate unke size ke nahi mil rahe hain. Man ka to jao, jahan pe mil rahe hain, wahan se leke raja ho, full size hoga. Man ka admi kaafi bada hai, to malab, bara size, bara size hoga. Kate, sir, hum full size bhi liya hai, unke paon, unke joote banwane padhenge. Itne bade paon hai. That's hilarious. Woh joote banwane padhenge. And in the film, he is wearing those bunny soft, you know, puffy things, you know, kind of sandals. You know. So, we have then designed design karwai, unske jute. They, we got his shoes made of whatever 14 size, <laughs> you know, with all the fluff, etc. You know, uh, rabbit fluff on it and all that thing. So, so, but it was great, yeah, you know. And he was, he's a director's delight, you know. You ask him for you know, X, he will give you X plus two, you know, which will make you happy. He's so good. And I, I'm so happy, you know, uh, for uh, there are so many um, Marathi stage actors and actors who act in Marathi films who never get the exposure in Hindi films. And they're all great actors. Mm. And, you know, Deepak mm. Shirke is one of them. Uh, Kishor Kadam is a much bigger name. He has done a lot of theater and all that. Uh, and he's also mm. a writer. But I was so glad to see him in this kind of a role. Yeah, means I'm waiting to, you know, get them back into something equally quirky, if not more, you know. Awesome, awesome. Rather, I would be waiting for that. Yeah, rather we are thinking of making a series out of one of the characters. You know, it's like a, from Breaking Bad, you make Call the Saul. Yeah, it's like a spin-off. Similarly right? from, so, you know, my my creative team is saying from Ek Chalis, let's pull out one character around which we will make <laughs> the series, you know, and uh, well, let's see. It's just on the idea level right now. Okay. Uh, but maybe if all works out well soon, I'll share with you which character <laughs> around Please who. Please do. I'll be waiting and wishing you the very best for the series. I yeah. would definitely watch a show like that. Yeah. <laughs> no, I'm. I'm sure we'll make it quite interesting. It will be again, uh, dark, funny you know, adrenaline-oriented stuff that will be made. Sanjay, let's talk about the influences on the film and um, 
एक चालीस की लास्ट लोकल इन्फ्लुएंसेस ऑन सम ऑफ द न्यूअर फिल्म सो यू नो देर आर सम वेरी ऑब्वियस रेफरेंसेज एंड लाइक यू सेट देर ऑल मोस्टली सब कॉन्शियस बिकॉज यू हैव सीन दिस फिल्म सो मेनी टाइम्स एंड दे आर कैन इन ग्रेंड इन योर मेमोरी बट देर इज सर्टनली अ पल्प फिक्शन रेफरेंस विद द ईयर and with marcellus uh, getting uh, sodomized um like i said there is a reference to <laughs> dark the fire of violent love story which is a rajkanwar <laughs> film and that was really cool you know when i first saw it i uh, uh, i i picked it up right away because i had seen the film in theaters you know back in the late 90s mm. and i mm. i just thought you know that was like really cool uh, reference <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> well then let me tell you that ek chalis was actually released and and at a, in a very at a very small scale at that time also there were around 2500 or 3000 plus theaters and we had released only in around 160 और थिएटर्स सो यू कैन अंडरस्टैंड कितने छोटे डायनामिक्स के अंदर फिल्म रिलीज की थी हमने बट फिल्म रैन फॉर एटलीस्ट फाइव फाइव वीक्स इन ऑल द थिएटर्स एंड यू नो वाइल एवरीबडी एल्स इज फिल्म गोइंग डाउन इन यू नो फोर डेज वन वीक यू नो एंड एक चालीस वो स्टिल रनिंग फॉर फाइव वीक्स वॉज लाइक वॉट इज हैपन गैज वी नेवर एक्सपेक्टेड इट वी जस्ट वॉन्टेड इट टू गेट रिलीज यू नो सो इट वॉज अ ग्रेट वर्ड ऑफ माउथ या यू नो विच एक्चुअली resulted in boost of the dvd sales and ek chalis ki last local became one of the most sold dvds of those times you know and um, yeah i was really glad when i got a call from the company also stating that and you know kind of thanking without any check to me but <laughs> <laughs> but yeah i was there i'm glad somebody made money <laughs> right and uh, have you seen uh, loot case um, uh, sanjay uh loot case yes uh, recently you know i that was a good and film and that film really, reminds me uh, a lot about ek chalis and yeah. especially there is a scene uh, where uh, one of the goons uh, asks uh, kunal khemu uh, to kis ka aadmi hai and khemu answers mm-hmm. my lata ka aadmi ho lata being his wife mm-hmm. <laughs> and I, i thought that was a straight call back to uh, kishor kadam and abhay dev yeah it's <laughs> asking yeah. him you know who does he work for so it has it has no, like, its legacy and it it it, it has uh, yeah. you know impacted a lot of uh, writers and filmmakers as well i'm just glad that our work has reached to people and it was able to create some ripple in the cinema of that time and uh, not getting too much of opportunity right now everything is bottled up but the day the bottle opens up you will see some some more mind blowing stuff coming out you know hopefully another year or so awesome just yeah also awesome. and uh, sanjay you did uh, do a sequel to ek chalis right uh, kismat love paisa dilli but i i, Actually, it's I haven't seen that movie that. Uh, but thank yeah. god okay <laughs> <laughs> there is a print on youtube but it's a very awful print so i i didn't want to watch it like yeah, that yeah yeah no it's it's not a sequel to that it's a one oh, night okay. thriller uh, which uh, it, it's actually a so voice no of connection to ek chalis no no connection to ek chalis it was uh, its original name was gara chalis ki last metro you know just initially it was that because it's a one night and you know we are keeping let's keep the pillars same and the idea was to make with abhay deol and sonam we was the idea with which i was writing but then eventually you know uh, sometimes things go haywire and then you end up with a vivek obroy and malika shirawat with the title of kismat love paisa delhi and five songs so whatever you are thinking it suddenly you know you are landing you know lot of degrees away from that uh, but that is what filmmaking is it's uh, you know uh, you have to be very careful in uh, in saying no <laughs> you know uh, this should not be done you know but because it was just my second film and i really didn't a very clear vision of what uh, commercial cinema was or you know so you you get mixed up and but we learn our lessons from things and uh, we get more focused you know on what needs to be told and that's what we are doing now so it was not a uh, never a ek chalis ki last local part 2 it was a different story uh, you know just the common part was that uh, a person misses his metro you know and it escalates from there but it had a lot of past behind unlike ek chalis was linear 
that he is missed and there is no flashback here the film had a different flashback you know in that and that's what it makes it different then well uh, that was great sanjay i um, really appreciate this opportunity of chatting thanks simanshu i'm really surprised that you had like uh, mugged ek chalis to that level and i would just uh, <laughs> i was trying to remember who that girl gangster girl was and uh, that is sunita rajwar okay. sunita rajwar and, uh, okay right. yeah sunita rajwar is also doing some great stuff on television and brilliant actress she is and she is also one of those gangster fa- girl whose face was there in my mind while casting you know because she's had a very uh, you know peculiar style of speaking and sunita did that wonderfully you know so vijay vijendra saxena and sunita rajwar they teamed up to be great gangsters for me <laughs> so once again sanjay thanks a lot uh, i had really pleasure uh, talking with you i hope yeah. you had a good time too i really had a good time himanshu you know and thank you for uh, this lovely podcast and uh, having me on your show and making me remind of the wonderful time i had shooting ek chalis ki last local uh, thank you once again If you like the episode, do spread the word. And don't forget to subscribe to the podcast wherever you listen to your pods. Also, do drop us a review in Apple Podcasts when you get a chance. You can follow me on Twitter and Instagram at loveofcinemasf8 for podcast-related updates and my tweets on all things movies. That's the episode. This is Himanshu signing off. And like always, thank you for listening to the Love of Cinema podcast.